what is database normalization and why do you need it and when should you use it? Okay, so the, in, in a nutshell, normalization is really just a, um, a series of steps that you take uh, or rules that you, uh, you follow to make sure that a large database or a large table is broken down to very small tables so that those tables will not have any problems when you insert, delete, or update data. Okay, we call these errors called uh, anomalies, right? So when you have an insert anomaly, that means when you insert some data into the table, it causes some errors. And when you delete a record from the table, it also causes some error as well. And same thing with the deletion. So when you have those kind of issues, we call that table is not normalized or it's not normal, okay? So if you think about a normal table, is a table that has all the data and those data should be only about that table. Okay? If, if any of the data in the table is not about the table, is we'd say that table is not normal, right? It's not normalized is the correct, I guess, technical term for that. Okay, so, um, it, it, so it's a well-structured relation. The term relation here is, is just, just another name for table, okay? Um, so when we hear the term relation, it is a table. So here I just uh, saying that a table should satisfy at least the following. And I mentioned this before already, that the table should describe one and only one entity. Okay, if it does not describe that single entity, then that table is not normalized. Okay. And then all the rows must be unique, right? So every table should have a primary key. That's the general basic rules. And then the order of these columns or the rows are not important, right? You can order in any way you want and the database uh, structure, it doesn't really matter. Okay, so these three are the three key uh, points that all relational database uh, should satisfy or should have, okay? Um, <clears throat> so let's go down here. Again, we talked about this briefly last time. So when a database is used as a a live transaction database system, like the business processes here, these are usually need to be normalized, okay? And the OLAP type is for data mining contains a lot of old historical data or, you know, uh, making prediction and things like that. You don't have to normalize these. So usually these are not normalized data and they are more useful in that way, okay? But if you want to do processing, live processing, your data should be normalized. Okay, so that is another reason uh, why when you should use a normalized uh, database. So again, I'm gonna skip that, go down here. We already looked at this last time already, the different tech terminology. So make sure you know what they are and uh, you know get used to what they mean. And right here, I just mentioned that above, the three reasons why a, a database should be normalized is to prevent these anomalies, okay? So the three type delete, update, and insert mainly. And when you design a database, we talk about this, either approach will be fine. Uh, and then we talk about relationships already, right? We did that a few weeks back. I'm gonna skip that and go right down to uh, this part here. Okay, so when you normalize a table, a database, uh, it follows a certain form. We call these the normal forms. And there are about six or eight, probably more than that, and the uh, normalization process. But typically, in a you know um, regular usage or regular database systems, it's very very highly unlikely that we're going to uh, normalize a table all the way to the sixth normalization uh, form here. Okay, so usually up to the third or the fourth one here. Sometimes these two are used interchangeably to mean the same, but a little bit slightly different. But usually we just normalize a table to the third normal form. And sometimes just call it three NF, okay? Third normal form, second and first. So you, your table, all the tables that you create should conform to this rule, okay? Should be in the third normal form. If it's not in the third normal form, you're going to have problems when you insert, delete, update data, all right? So I just focus on the first three. The textbook does uh, actually a little bit more by pushing you to do uh, one more step 
so that your table is actually in the BCNF form, which is a, a between the third and the fourth normal form. So when you're in the third normal form, you, you should be good, okay? So, um, and, and on the on the right side, it gives you some, some uh, descriptions for, I guess, some requirements that if your table is in the first normal form, this must be true, okay? I mean, the value store in the intersection, I mean, in the cell, right? In each cell must store a scalar value. The scalar value is mean a single value, okay? It cannot have two or three values in the cell. Like, for example, if a cell is called first name, then it should contain only one first name. It should not contain John and Jack and Joe, right? That's not normal. <clears throat> So if that's the case, you have to fix it. And if you have that, then uh, usually that would satisfy the first normal form. This is not complete, okay? Not only that, you should also have a primary key, okay? So that's the first normal form. Once you pass that, then you can move on to the second normal form. The second normal form, so these are cumulative, okay? In order to um, uh, satisfy the second normal form, to start from the second normal form, your table must have already met the first normal form. You can't just jump to two, okay? So if this is completed, now you can check the second normal form. That means that every non-column, non-key column, so you have a primary key already in the first normal form. Now you check, do all the columns in that table depend only on uh, uh, the primary key, okay? Depend on the primary key, I guess. Um, if that's not the case, then you need to fix that and we'll do the process, go with the process. And then the third normal form <clears throat> here is kind of same thing here. Um, actually it's missing uh, some things in here, but kind of like combining this together here. Okay, that's why they put the third normal form is also sometimes referred to as the BCNF, right? The boys caught here referred to the two um, people who actually developed this process way back in the 1970s, okay? So, that means that your table must have a primary key. <clears throat> All the column in the table must depend only on this primary key. And then you do not have any other, other columns that depend on other columns in that table. Again, we'll look at some of these things called transitive dependencies and functional dependencies and so forth in here, okay? And we're not gonna do the fourth and fifth and sixth columns um, normal form. So these three others, the most, uh, um, important one we look at in this course. <clears throat> so here is just a uh, list of some of the benefits of normalization. <clears throat> okay, uh, again, just to prevent uh, data from error having errors, it also makes your database much leaner. Okay, so you don't have a lot of duplicate data in there. Uh, imagine you have the same number of data inside that each row and all you have is just one single cell that is different, right? That is not cool, right? You have a lot of repeating data. So in the end, it consumes a lot of RAM, a lot, I mean, a lot of uh, memory space. So we don't want that. Not only that, we want to make sure that the data are actually very accurate and correct, right? So imagine if you enter some, if I have a uh, one person enter some data entry into a database table, and they have my title as instructor, another one enter my information and they can, they have as, as faculty, and then another one enter my information, they call it staff, right? Which one is it? Am I, am I a staff, a faculty or instructor or what, right? So again, you have data integrity issues in this case. So you wanna fix that so that every time we enter my record, I'm always a faculty or I'm always a staff. There's no, no other information that can uh, um, add in there, right? So we, we avoid that and make sure everything is very accurate. And also when you have a normalized table, it's very fast. The indexes when you search in there is much faster and quicker, okay? Uh, so that is mainly um, uh, some of the reasons why we have normalization. <clears throat> and the question is like, when is a table considered normalized? When they ask you this question, the answer is it has to be in the third normal form, okay? It must be in the third normal form. If it's not in the third normal form, it is not normalized, okay? So that is the a general rule across the board for all uh, relational database uh, systems. Okay, so that, and then here is a um, an example, and this note 
that goes through the process of normalizing a table. <clears throat> okay, so everything in blue here are the things that should occur, uh, should be true when a table is in the first normal form. Okay, so here's an example table that you might receive, like an order table. Okay, you have this information here. Um, so this is called an unnormalized table. Okay, and a very common I think you will see it's like a receipt. Like you order something from Amazon or Walmart and they send it to you, they send you the receipt. You look at the receipt, it has the information there. And all those data can be you know, generated through a table, right? You did that during the first or uh, second week of assignments where we do some queries. Right? I ask you to you know, uh, select data from two or three tables and you get a result set that comes from three or four tables. But data itself is a single, virtual table, right? So this is what exactly what's happening there. So from here, so if you have a table that design that looks like this in the table as one, two, three, four, five, six columns, okay? And now I ask you to say, hey, Jeff, here is another order. I want you to go into this table and enter the data. So Jeff will go in here, enter order number 104. The date would be today's date and the customer number. Uh, maybe one of the same customers here. And instead of AMCO, you might type AMCO company, right? So it's, you can see it's a different name uh, already, even though the customer number might be the same. So we have something wrong with the name because I, I might choose to enter, you know, CO with a dot as opposed to just CO, or I might, I might um, spell the whole word company like that, right? And then when you enter the street in here, you know, um, Jeff might enter one, two, three, four, and then you might spell out the word first as opposed to the one ST, right? And then the item orders over here uh, could be something similar. Okay, so you can see that it has a problem here already, right? I have a different name when you name the, the company name. This three address is spelled differently. So we have some of these issues because it's not normalized, <clears throat> okay? Uh, so uh, not only that, if you look at this table here, remember the rule, it says a table should be only about that object. Okay, so whatever this table is called, maybe this is called the order table, okay, order. Now, are these information about and only about an order, right? So I guess you have to determine what is an order, okay? So, so that was what it means. I mean, uh, um, so if you cannot conclude that these items are about order, then therefore it's not normalized. Okay, so again, some example here, you go through a process. Um, so if you look at this table, what is the primary key here, right? Is there a primary key? A primary key is the key that is unique, that is used to define or determine all the other columns in this table. So if you look at the order number 100, right? If you, every time when you see this number here, if you look to the right of that, all these columns, do you always get the same data, okay? Or you don't, right? If you do, then this is uh, called a, a, a determinant or determinant key, but it's also unique, right? That entire row should be unique. That means this uh, row should not be the same as this row here, okay? <clears throat> so, um, that's the first thing. And you, you test the first rule. Are there any repeating data? Okay, repeating groups here refers to the um, notion that a cell, this is a cell, a cell should contain only one type of data, right? About this particular field or attribute. So the company name should only contain the company name. So this is okay, legit. The address, it's okay, right? These are fine. But if you look at the items order, you have a bunch of information here. We have a, a product ID number, the name of the product, the weight, the price, uh, some other descriptions, and the weight more as, as well, right? So you have all these jumbled up together inside one cell. And that rule uh, fails because the rule says it should be in a, um, atomic values only, okay? So therefore, we have to fix this problem. And how do you fix that? You fix that by you have to then create or break this 
uh, cell is calmed down into multiple columns and this table so that the product ID is its own column, the name is its own column, the weight and the price or unit price, okay? So now you have like one, two, three, four additional columns uh, can be added to this table so that each cell has its own data. If that's the case, then you can check it again. Now, are there any repeating groups in the uh, data? Then if it says no, then this first clause pass. And then we have the second uh, uh, information, right? And so forth, okay? Those are the rules you can test to make sure that everything is satisfied. <clears throat> so it just tells you that um, repeating data here, uh, right, okay, so yeah, data is not self-contained, what I just described, I'm sorry. The uh, repeating data, repeating data, repeating groups here, it just means that um, if you look at this, <clears throat> right, look at this, every row here. So the first row I have, the company name is repeating here. I have it again, one of three is repeating here again, right? So when I see that, not only that, if you look at the customer number, it's also repeating here in here. Okay, so I'm looking at say, hey, um, this customer number is, you know, like, or, um, tells me that the name of this company is this AMC, Acme Company, right? So again, I can know this company name by looking at the customer number. If I know the customer number, I can know the company name. So in this case, these two columns are repeating, right? It's repeating data and they don't have to be in here all together. So therefore you will have to remove one of them. Which one should be moved? Should you remove the customer number and keep the company name? Or should you remove the company name and keep the customer number? So that is something that you have to decide, but you should not keep both of them, okay? That's the repeating data. And then this is the uh, data um, yeah, atomic values, okay? So those two are, violating this table, therefore they're not normalized, okay? So that's why you have to break them apart. And here example of you break that into a, um, a customer table, and then you create a, their, their customer number as the primary key for that new table. You move the name there, you move the addresses to that table as well. And then in the old table, you drop the, right, so we drop, we decided to drop the customer name, and the address because they are related. So these three are related. We drop these two, we keep this one as the foreign key, and then we move that to a new table down here, and then we reference only by the customer number. So this customer number here is now the foreign key, okay? How do I get that information? Well, if you look at the other table, you join, right? Number you do the join, right? Uh, select everything from the orders table, uh, join the customer table, where the customer number equals the customer number. You get that information, right? If you can do that, then that's the way to go, okay? So we resolve the first problem. The second problem is now we have some of these values that I mentioned earlier. So what you need to do is we're gonna split this into multiple columns. And then now we have something that looks like this, okay? So we have, you know, initially it was, this whole thing was one big cell we we'll break it apart in this case into a one, two, three, four, five, six uh, additional columns to that orders table. Okay, so now it satisfied the rule, right? The rule says every cell must be unique, right? It must have a, not unique, has a single value type. Now they are, okay, and there's no repeating data. That means that this column should be unique about, I shouldn't have another column that can tell you know, that can give me clues to the other columns, okay? So if, if this is the case, then we also have a primary key. <clears throat> we decided that, um, can this be a primary key? Okay, remember, a primary key has to be unique, right? So we actually um, cannot just keep this as a primary key because if you look at it, key 100, it's repeating, right? Primary keys cannot be repeated, right? It has to be unique. So therefore the order number itself in this case, is not, cannot be used as the primary key. So what you need to do is you have to, you have to decide, hmm, do I wanna combine this primary key with another column, either the date column or the customer number column? So if you look at the, if I combine the order number and the order date as a primary key, remember you can use two key columns as one to create a primary key, we call that a composite key because they have more than two columns, 
if you look at this, you know, 100, 1, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2, it seems unique, but then it determines it's repeating, right? Repeating here, repeat here again, again, so again, that rule doesn't apply. So what about if I take the order number and the part number, can that be unique? Maybe, maybe not. Why? Because if you look at this number down here, right? Uh, it, it's possible that uh, the same order number can have, um, well, I mean, it, I guess it's possible, right? So you're gonna, you have to think which column or columns can I combine to make a primary key? And you can combine multiple columns. I can combine all of these four, five columns and make this a big primary key. It's not ideal, but you can, right? So if you think about that, is that better or should I create another additional key that doesn't exist in this table? When you create another additional column, I mean, column here, we call that a surrogate key, right? A key that doesn't exist in the table here. If you create a new one, that is called a surrogate key. And that could be uh, maybe the order ID. And then that will be unique for everything. And then that will solve the problem, right? So that's something you have to think about. And so here, and, and so we, what and they're doing is do something like I mentioned, add another column called line number, right? This one doesn't exist. We just call it line number. And then now we combine this line number with the order number. Now you make this unique. So there's no duplicate here at all. 1001, 1002, and 103, right? Now these are unique and it defines everything on this columns, okay? So now we decided that, okay, we're gonna make this as the primary key is a composite key, okay? So now that solves the first rule. And you move to the second rule. The second rule says, it must meet the first rule, so it has to be true. And then each column must depend on the whole primary key, okay? So, so here's the primary key here. If you look at the order number, <clears throat> does it depend on that? Now, before I go any further, we'll come back here a little bit later. I wanna take you to another uh, page and, and look at some of these terminologies first, okay? So over here um, on this uh, unit seven, there is another, um, link that takes you to a database design guide. If you want to follow along there, it's fine. It's the link here that will open this table over here, okay? So let's go over here and look at some of these uh, things again. We already talked about this uh, a little bit, but um, the uh, rule, we design databases, is that when should you normalize tables? And yes, I'm just showing you here, usually, when you are presented with a spreadsheet or some really raw data that contains some data that is not in a table or a very, very broad, uh, large data set, like a text file or spreadsheet. If that's the case, then you have to normalize it. Okay, you have to create a table or tables for these data, then you have to normalize them. Okay, that is usually when you should do that. Uh, this is another one as well. Um, uh, you can you can extract some data from existing databases, right? The same similar process. Here, some people give you a spreadsheet or some text file, and you build a database. Here, you are you are obtaining some data from an existing database, a collection of from different places, and they give you um, some raw data. It will also be in the form of a database, and then you have to re redesign that as well. Okay. So the similar approach. And then um, other ways to uh, design data, we did this before. This is when you design a new system or new database that has no data. Um, when we did our uh, example using ERD, right? And that's how you do it. So in this is the case, it's much simpler to do that because we don't have any data to um, think about. All we know is, okay, I need to you know, create a table for a user, create table for um, a, a game, create table for a, a, a level or things like that. So you know exactly what you want already. So usually going for that approach, your database are usually already kind of normalized. Okay, so it's, it's much simpler that way. The harder part is when you have some data to play with, okay? So this is another uh, uh, design. Another one would be you are updating some existing database. Okay, you're going from here, you're migrating to another system or design, 
then you have the option to either um, make sure that they are correct or um, um, renormalize them. Okay. But the most common is, of course, it has some raw data. So here's some terminology again, the term table and the terms of table and relation here, it just mean the same thing, okay? It's just different way how you can, how you say in different contexts, but it's the same thing. So you can see a table here <clears throat> uh, is like a relation, it's a file, similar. And a column is also known as attribute in this relation type and a field in the file, like a, a spreadsheet, right? And then a row in a table is called a row and a row and the relation is called a tuple. And then a file, especially a line is called a record, right? So they all mean the same thing. You are, are not familiar. So make sure you are um, understand that, okay? So down here, some important uh, relational terminologies. I already put some definitions here for you. I did not do the last two here, but last three, but it, I'm sure pretty, pretty uh, simple, okay? So relation is a table, a functional dependency. We'll look at that in a minute. It's when the value of one or more uh, columns, attributes here is a column, uh, determine the value of another attribute or column, okay? That means that it is dependent on the other columns. A determinant is a column or a collection of columns that determine other columns. Determining, we'll look at some math examples so you'll see a little bit better. And then based on these determinants, when you find them, they can be used as what's called a candidate key, right? A candidate key is not a primary key. It just uh, gives you some idea that, okay, this table has three or four possible keys that are candidates for a primary key, okay? So a primary key is really a candidate key. And that means a candidate key is also uh, used as a unique key, okay? So you have, if you have a couple of them, how do, you, how do I decide which one is which one? You have to pick one. Okay, and that one you pick is called the primary key because it's the primary key that used to be a uniquely identified each row, right? And then if you don't have a primary key, I mean, it should have it, but if you don't like it, you can create one yourself and we call that the surrogate key, okay? So it's an artificial column that is not included in the, in the uh, table, but you add it there just so that you have a primary key. And then foreign key, we already know this, Foreign key is a column or key that is linked to the external table, it's primary key, okay? And then refer referential integrity here, it refers to some constraints. We'll talk about this again uh, next week or the week after that about some constraints that you have. Uh, it has to do with the foreign key. So when you have a foreign key and another table, those two tables are has some referential integrity constraints, meaning that you cannot delete one table from the other. If you if you want to do that, you have to do it in the correct order. I kind of showed you last time how we add some data into our tables, and I tried to delete some of the records, and it would not let me do it, right? Because one table is dependent on the other table. When that happens, we created something called the referential integrity. The referential means reference, right? I'm, re I'm referencing another table uh, data. So when that is tightly referenced or um, created, you cannot break the bond. You have to do it in the correct way, <clears throat> okay? Normal form, you have talked about that already, is normal form is a table is in the three, uh, three and F or third normal form. And multi-value dependencies. This just means that um, a, a, a column, can be used as a dependent uh, for other columns. Okay, if 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 I have like two or three columns that rely on another column, then we call that multi-value dependencies. Okay, uh, <clears throat> if that's the case, then we want to uh, prevent that from happening. Okay, so it's just some terminologies. Okay, so here is another. Uh, a rule for um, relationships and relations okay, about uh, a normalized table. Okay, so all rows contain data about that entity. Again, the word entity here refers to actual uh, object of that table. Columns contain data about attributes of the entities. It's kind of similar, <clears throat> right? So all the columns should be about that um, object described 
and all entries in the column are of the same kind, right? Again, if you enter a, um, a column called address, it should be an address. It should not be about a company name, right? So it should be of the same type. So if you think about in terms of programming, it's the same data type, okay? Each column is unique lead name, right? <laughs> you don't have the same ID and ID twice. Uh, cells, so each, each cells must hold a single value. A single value of the same type, like I showed you earlier, a um, uh, a like a phone a phone column cannot contain two or three phone numbers, right? It should be only one phone number. <laughs> and the order is not important. The row is not important, right? And then no two rows may be identical, meaning no duplicates, right? Again, so this rule applies to what we call the third normal form, okay? So all your database tables should follow this rule. If any one of these rules is violated, it is not normalized. Okay. So you can use this to check when you normalize the table. Down here is an example of, let me make it bigger, actually, got to do that, sorry, of a normalized table. Okay, if you look at the table here, you see that all columns have the single data. We call this um, atomic values or anonymity. So if you look at the first column, right, every data, every cell has only one type of data in there. Here is the comment. So of course, it's a, it's a text, but it is about one thing only. We don't have like phone numbers or email in here, right, suddenly. Okay, so that rule holds. All rows contain, uh, are about that entity. In this case, it's about employee, right? It's about the individual employee. Is it? If it's not about employee, it should it, it violates this rule. So if you look at this employee, Jerry Johnson has a ID number of 100. And Jerry is in the accounting department. This is his email, his phone number, and it's a comment about him, right? So they all are about this Jerry. The next person as well. So you can see that all these columns are about that individual only. So that must be true, okay? If it's only I have like here, if I have another column called um, computer, right? And, and you have like a Mac and then you have a PC or something, you know, that computer has nothing to do with Jerry because I can switch that to a different computer, okay? It has to be something that can be fixed and uh, um, or about that person only. A computer could be another thing that Jerry owns or is associated with, something that is extended from Jerry. Then it's, if that's the case, is something external and we call that a foreign object, right? So we have foreign key to map to that item, okay? So all entries in the column are of the same kind. So again, email addresses are only about email addresses. We don't put phone numbers in here, okay? <clears throat> and same thing for department and, and so forth. So that rule flows, holds. And then I put a comment here saying this column here, the last column, uh, we don't have a lot, you know, a lot of data to uh, look at, you might have a hundred employees that all the comments might be included. But here, if you look at this, we have only two people that have comments and the other uh, six, okay, one, two, three, four, five people do not have any comments. In this case, you could, you know, move the comments out to another table um, and then just reference that, or um, we can leave it as is, it's fine too. Okay, it's just optional. <clears throat> but the comments are about that individual employee still, okay? So another one here, another is uh, uh, normalized, similar as above. Only difference is we took out the common, right? So if you remove the common, it's actually much cleaner than the one above, okay? It's still the same. And then here is an example of similar above. Now it's not normalized, okay? So why? Because we have some rules that is broken. So if you look at Tom's information, he has he has like three different phone numbers in the same cell, so that violates this rule, right? It says cells should contain only a single value, and this one fails. It's also down here, right? Richard also has two numbers, so these two rules, uh, these two cells violate this rule, so you have to fix that. <clears throat> you can either remove and cho choose only one, or what if you want to list all three numbers, all two numbers? Well, if that's the case you have to add another column, like phone one, phone two, phone three. What if you 
have three columns for three phones, but then only one person has those or two or three employees have only those two phones and the rest don't have them. So again, you're wasting some columns, right? If that's the case, what do you do? Okay, something to think about. Here's another example of irregularities. So again, same, uh, same um, idea. All entries in each column must be of the same kind, right? So we have the violation here that um, the email address column has some facts in the home text in here. Okay, so this is a text only, but we store some in irregular data in here. So therefore, these are not uh, normal. <clears throat> not only that, if you look at this data here, these are all empty. Why is that? Why do we keep these empty cells? Doesn't make sense, right? So in this case, you have to normalize this table. We did this so that we can you know, fix the last column so that the phone numbers can have its own cell. Great, this is fixed now, but then we have issues over here now, right? So in this case, how do you fix it, <clears throat> okay? So a, a solution for that would be to create a third table, right? I create a third table, I can call it a uh, phone. Actually, I didn't give a name, but I call it phone, uh, phone table. And then you have each phone has a phone ID that is associated in there. And then we add the employee number in here. This is like foreign key, in here, okay? So I put here, um, okay, so we know it's foreign key. So that foreign key now uh, points to that employee uh, whoever 400 was, I think was, um, let's see, 400 was uh, Tom, right? Tom has three numbers. This is like an office number, fax number, home number. Okay, so same fax and home. So we add in here, so Tom, 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 the first phone number, match the phone ID number one, is an office number, the phone, actual phone number, and the type is office. The second number is fax and third is home, right? And then this person here has uh, office, a home number. We have another one here uh, as well. So we can also list the other as well, but also those only have just the phone number. And, and that's fine, right? I didn't list all of them, but if you were to add like for example, Richard, right? The last one, 700, and then you put here the phone number uh, ID, okay? So it will be like, um, actually Richard has two right? from a different table. Okay, so we can see that by removing and creating a third table, we solve the problem. Now, this table is in third normal form. You have to think about that too, right? So we have, this is the PK. So my D is the PK here. So that is unique, okay? Unique is there's no duplicate in that column. And now uh, we see that it has a primary key. This is the foreign key. And then these are now um, defined by the primary key and employee number. It makes it unique, right? <clears throat> okay, so let's look at the functional dependencies. What does it mean by a functional dependency? So it is when a value in one of the cells, okay, one value, if you just look one value at a time, okay, one value or more, determines the value of another attribute. So to think into perspective of a math problem, maybe it makes more sense. So if you look at this example, I pulled this on the book, by the way, I'm just gonna explain it to you again. So we have a cookie cost is equal to the number of boxes times the price of that cookie or box, right? So in this case, we say that in order for us to know the cost of the cookie, right, we really have to know these two numbers. Assume that number five is a fixed number, it's given, it's fixed. Then in order to know the cost of the cookie, we have to know the number of boxes. So we say that the cost of the cookie depends on the number of boxes. Functional meaning that, you know, a cookie depends on the function of this because this number can change, right? If the number goes up, the price goes up. If the number goes down, the price goes down. So if you look at the graph, it looks like a graph that goes up and down. It's a linear graph. That's why it's called function, right? Functional. So therefore, this cookie cost depends on this number of boxes. So we call this, the cookie cost is functionally dependent on the number of boxes, okay? And you write that in, uh, in the program, in the book, they use the arrow to do it this way. So the number of boxes, okay? The arrow here means determines 
the number uh, of the cost of the cookie. Okay, so it's a, the number of boxes determines cookie cost. And we call this number of boxes a determinant because it determines the cost, okay? So that's what those term determinant means and functional dependency means. <clears throat> so uh, another example is like a grade in the classroom, like in this database class, right? So Jeffrey plus database, you take the class, by the end of the semester, you can earn a grade, okay? If you just look at yourself, you we don't, we cannot associate with you with the grade. What does that mean? If you look at the class by itself, we don't know either. Class got an A, uh, so what What does that mean, right? We don't know. But oh, this class here taken by this student got a grade. So now we have some information. So therefore, we say this grade is dependent on both the student and the class, okay? So we have a dependency here again, right? So we say this, the student and the class, if you read it the other way around, right? The student and the class determine the grade. The grade is de dependent on the student and the class. Okay, so we have this uh, functional dependency here as well. Here we have two of them. So we call this the composite determinant. Composite here means like two or more, as opposed to a, a single determinant, we just call it determinant. <clears throat> here we have composite, all right? So using that idea, if you think about in the table column, one column for grade, one column for student, one column for class. How do you know here which one is the determinant, right? Can the grade be determined? Does the grade determine the student? No, we don't know that, right? Does it determine the class? No, it doesn't, okay? And if you look at the next one, if you look at the student, if I look at the student alone, by using the student's name or ID doesn't matter, or name, does that mean, does it determine the grade, right? It, it doesn't because it doesn't do anything. It has nothing to do with that. And the class itself, again, doesn't. But if you combine together, then you do have that, okay? So this is a math problem, but it's also the same rule when you build a database or you normalize a database table, right? So <clears throat> here's an example from the book. You look at this, so we have something that uh, has some data to play with. When you normalize database tables, it um, if you're given a set of data like this, okay, um, you have to think a little bit further, further down the road um, where you have a lot more data. Okay, whatever is given to you, what you see may not be just the thing that you use to um, normalize the table. It may not be correct. Okay, you have to ask some questions like, okay, um, can, for example, if you look at this one here, like the buyer, the buyer is Pete Hansen, Pete Hansen. If you look at this, Pete Hansen is always in the sports, uh, water sports department, but it, Nancy Myers is also in the water sports, right? So we know that, okay, so a department can have different buyers, okay? So can a department have different buyers? In this case, yes. So, so those are the business rules you have to, uh, um, uh, uh, ask and then make sure it works in that way. And you can ask the other way around. Can a buyer be in more than one department? So Pete is only in water. Every time you look at this row, you see Pete Hansen. His department is always water sports, water sports. Down here, I don't see it. I look at Nancy. She's also in water sports only. When I look at Cindy, Cindy is in camping, camping, camping. And then Jerry is in climbing. So you can see that you can assume that the buyer can only be in a single department. You cannot be in two departments, okay? So that's something you wanna ask the person who actually gave you the data. Say, so can a buyer be more than one department? If they say yes, if that's the case, then you have something to think about, right? If they say no, there's only one, one buyer can only be in one department, but they can be in the same department, like Nancy and Pete, then, Again, some rules you have to think about, right? <laughs> okay, so if you look at this uh, example here, the number on the left, just some counters, we ignore that. So we have a skew, a skew number. And if you look at the skew numbers, are they unique? So if you look at this, every cell, right, they appear to be very unique, okay? So no duplicates. So it's possible that this could be a primary key. 
And then you have the skill description. Are uh, these unique? If you look at these, it appears to be that they are unique, right? You don't have any duplicates in here. So no two items have the same description. So it's also unique. If you look at the department here, you don't have uniqueness, right? So this row has border sports and then repeating. So we already know that this cannot be used as primary key because it's repeating. <clears throat> Same thing for the buyer, right? This is not unique. So again, in that case, so you look at the first SKU number here, you ask yourself a question. For every column after it or before it doesn't matter, can, does, does this information depend on the SKU number? Okay, or does the SKU number determines the description? Like right, Mac to right? Does the number of boxes determine the cost of the cookie? Okay, or does the cost of cookie depend on number of boxes? So that rule, does the SKU number 100100 determine the description of this product? If you think about it, say, uh, well, let's see if there's another one down here. And if you look at this, there's no 101 down here. It's unique. So we can say that, yes, it does describe this one because this uh, uh, description depends only on this SKU number. I don't have the same description that is coming from a different SKU number. If I do have it, then this rule fails. Okay. So we can say that the SKU description depends on the SKU number and the SKU number determines the description. Okay, so this one here pass. What about the next one? Does the SKU number determine the department? Okay, so by that, I mean like, if you look at every time in this column, every time we see this 100100 in every, every column here, every row, if you go over to the department, is it always the same department or not? Okay, if it is always the same, then we say that this one determines that column. Okay, so if you look at this, this since it's really unique, we know that it already determines the department. What about the buyer? Same thing. There's no duplicate, so that rule is easy. We can say that now this queue number determines the description. It also determines the department and the buyer. Okay, so if that's the case, then we also say, make sure it's true, <clears throat> right? Is, is it true the other way around, right? <clears throat> you have to check for everyone of them. So we know that SQ number is, uh, um, is a possible candidate for a key, okay? And then you look at the description, same rule. Does, if, you, if I see standard school about tank yellow, if you look at the SKU number, it's always going to be 100100. Since it's already unique, it's the same rule as SKU number, right? It determines that one. Look here, it's always what is sports is unique, and P is also unique. I don't have any other copy. So this is also a possible primary key. Okay. And then you go to the next one. <clears throat> so what I'm doing is I'm determining all the determinants, okay? So I put, I put notes in here. Um, let's see, right here. Uh, number one is determine all um, uh, determinants. Okay, all right, so we determine that skill is description. It also uh, determines the department. Also determines the buyer, so we we learn that right, and the SKU is also the same thing. So we say uh, SKU number, SKU oops, SKU description is also uh, determines that determine the department and also the buyer. So it is right is unique. So now we look at the department. Does the department <clears throat> hold the same rule. If I look at, if I see water sports, do I always see P Tencent? This one, yes, 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 yes. And suddenly no, right? It's not true here because I see Nancy now. So you can see that this department does not determine the buyer. 
I guess. If you look on the right side, I see a yellow, yeah, um, yes, that's true. But the next one here is different, right? Here is different. So again, this does not determine the description. It does not determine the skew number as well because it's different every time. In order for this to be true, it must always be the same thing, right? <clears throat> every time we see the duplicate here. So we know that the problem does not um, determine uh, any of those. So this one actually uh, failed, right? Let's say that. What about the buyer? Uh, see, let's look at the buyer. So does the buyer determine the department? Um, if you look at Pete Hansen, you always see water sports. Pete, water sports? Yes, yes, yes. Nancy, water sports? Yes. Nancy, water sports? Yes. So you can see that every these all these uh, buyers, you always see the same department. So if that's the case, we say that the buyer does determine the department. Okay. What about the description? Can they determine the description? If I see Pete, I see the yellow scuba. I see Pete. Oh, I see the magenta. No, right? That rule uh, failed because it's different. Okay. So it doesn't be it does not determine the skew description. What about the skew number? Again, it does not because the first Pete here is one zero zero one zero zero. The second occurrence it shows a different skew number. So we say that it does not determine the skew. So in this case, the buyer only determined the department, okay? So we have these possible, so this one doesn't work, we can cross that out. Uh, uh, how do I strike it, right? So we can move that. So these are the possible determinants, okay? These are determinants. <laughs> the skew, the skew description and the buyer, okay? <clears throat> so if you look at this though, the skew determines all three of them. This description is also determines all three of them, but the buyer only one column. It is not, you know, describe the next, the first two columns. So we know for sure that this is not a possible for a primary key, right? Primary key has to be unique for all the other uh, um, uh, columns. So again, skew number, if you look at this down the list, right, it's all unique. There's no duplicates at all. There are no duplicates. It's a potential or a candidate key. The skew number is also unique all the way down. So it's also a candidate key. So we say these two are candidate key. Okay, this is also a candidate key. What does it mean, candidate key? Candidate key is potential for a primary key. Okay, so this is not, this is not a candidate key. Because it does not describe, it does not um, um, determine all the other columns. So only these two here. So now we have to decide which one should be used as the primary key. Okay, so if you look at this, then we know for sure that this is a better option for a primary key, right? It contains just some unique numbers as opposed to some text, okay? So this is, you know, um, it's okay. You see that it, it's, it's possible, but it, it's prone to having errors because I might accidentally type, you know, yellow or something twice in here, <clears throat> or I might run out of options, right? Because, you know, colors are, there's only so many colors in here. So the, the better option would be a SKU number, okay? So this is the best uh, option for a primary key, okay? So that's how you determine, um, how do you uh, determine um, determinants and also using the functional uh, dependency process, okay? So by know this formation, <clears throat> We got some information here, and then um, I put some information here as well down here, and then just some more example how to design databases using the um, ERD. Okay, so uh, using this rule, we're gonna come back after the break and we'll do example how we can normalize an unnormalized table. So I'll see you guys in 10 minutes and we'll continue, okay? So. Uh would you be able to talk with me for just a little bit in a uh, 
breakout room during yes. this break. Thank yep. you. Okay. And we will begin. So now I'm going to go over over here. And um, uh, if you click on this link, the unnormalized sample table. And so I think not before we, before we look at this, I want to look at it. Uh, yeah, I clicked on it and I could see it. Okay, let me give you another link first. Give me a second. Here. It's in Go Google Sheets. Uh, all right, I'm going to give you a link in the well, I'll be, it's okay, I'm just going to show you here. Um, where is it at? Okay, here's an example of another possible um, type of data that you can, you know, use to normalize. I'm not going to normalize this one, but I just want to show you that an example of some data you could receive from a customer or from your company for whatever reason. So if you look at this table here, this is a sales order. Okay, if you get this type of data, and, uh, you know, like. Okay, I'm gonna just move Okay, so if you have this type of data here, right, and you are a database designer, are you going to, you know, create a database for this? What would it look like, right? So a common sales order, you have the company name, the address, the email, the phone number, and then you have the customers information here. We have a an address for the uh, customer, and we have a shipping address for that customer as well. Maybe the same company, maybe a different company. We don't know. All we know is that we build this person here, and we ship it to this address. And there's some information about this invoice number, the, the date of this invoice, and the customer ID. So this ID here refers to this client down here, right? And there's some information about the salesperson who actually uh, made this transaction with the customer. So Michael here is from the sales uh, sales department. Uh, the shipping information is here, and then we have the actual items or products that have been sold to this customer. And then we have some the unit cost discounts for some items. The total cost for each of those items. Down the bottom we have the tax, uh, the total discount. And then we have the subtotal, the tax rate. And then the total cost down here. Okay. So something like this, if you look at this, I put a link down here as well. And I'll share this with you later. Um, that you can actually were to build a table, a single large table for all this information. Okay. It will look something like this. Okay. So I, I merge that over. I create a, a table. Hey, here I have just a, a number. It's a, just some counter number here. The first order, for example, the invoice number goes right here. The invoice date, the vendor, here would be like Comtelso is the company name. And then we have the address for the company. As you can see, it's all in one box, one cell. So normally, again, you want to break that out. So it's already valid rule number one. But for now, we have the vendor phone number, which is this number here. The email address goes here. And then we have the customer ID. Right? That's this one right here. <clears throat> and then the customer name is this one here. And then the company name and so forth. And then we have the shipping person. It's this record over here. So I can scroll that to the right. And I move that over here so you can see a little bit better. And then over here we have, you know, the uh, shipping company. Information goes here. On the right side of that, we have some more records calling. So it's a really, really long table, right? You can see that it's a lot of columns. All the way over here, we get to the very last few columns, we have that information about the product, okay? So we have the item at quantity for the products here, the item item number, the description, the unit price, the discount, and then we have over here the total discount on its own line because we cannot put that into that row, right? So you put that here, um, you add these up, you're gonna get the total here. And we have the subtotal, and then we have the tax rate, and then the Order over here. So as you can see, it looks very ugly, right? It really uh, not really useful. What happened? All these different, you know, all these cells are empty. What do we do with this? Okay. So, and then you can 
go a little bit further and design that and do something like that. So now we have the same order number, just different line number, line one, two, three, four, five, because this person ordered five items. It's and the same invoice number and the same date, same vendor, same company. So everything here is repeating data, as you can see, I mean, um, duplicate data until we get to all the way over here to the products information, right? So we have the product quantity here, that amount, uh, number, and then the cost, right? And we did all of these just to satisfy these items here. And then over here, we still have some problem because now how do we deal with this, right? So then you can see some problem already arising. And then you can, I can go a little bit further down. So now that I know this information, I can then classify them this way. Okay, so anything in white here, anything in white columns will be in the invoice table, for example. All the turquoise color can be moved to a table called vendor. It's, it's all about the vendor, the, the buyer and the seller. All in the yellow box over here is about the customer address, billing address. So this, both of these are actually about the customer, but they have a billing address and they have a shipping address. So you can have like two, actually, you know, a, a customer table and then you have a shipping or an address table out of that and you link that to the type of addresses, right? either a billing or a shipping address, okay? So you see how that can be broken down. And over here, we have the salesperson, has only about that salesperson here. Uh, we can add more information about the sales ID, salesperson ID, and so forth here. Again, anything white can stay in the invoice table. Or if you're on the right side, you're going down further, and we have the products information. So we have the... You know, everything in, in the red box here will be under the order detail table, maybe. So we have the quantity and the discount prices. And then we have a, a three columns here can be classified and build a, a product table just to contain the product, right? So each product has a unique number. So this could be the SKU number or added number, doesn't matter. And if you look at this table here, it's unique, right? It has the item number, the description, and its unique price. The discount price is given it's not in the product table because this is you know based on season right season or maybe different rules so that will be in a detailed table okay and then the the other ones over here in gray are known as derived data or calculated totals only because these can be calculated based on the quantity and the unit price okay so we do that that these are just cal calculated, so therefore they should not be included in the table. Okay, so these gray ones should be removed, right? The sales tax is stays because it will stay the same or it may change, but these are you know uh, dependent on just the unit price and the quantity. They can be calculated, so we don't need it. Okay? Same thing for the total discount. This total discount here is dependent on the sum of all the um, uh, I think all the discounts, right? This plus this, plus everything here, you get 36. So this is calculated. Subtotal is also calculated, right? You just add all these up and, you, and then subtract the discount, you get the subtotal. And then the total is also calculated. So you can see anything that is calculated should not be on the table, okay? So this is an example of how you would build this, um, you know, sample order into this table here. So that's just some, I want to show you them. So now let's look at a database design where we can normalize, um, uh, not this one here, this one here, okay? If you look at this table, it's an employee table that has some information here. And again, we're gonna look at those rules. Which one of these columns can be used as a primary key, right? So in this example, it's pretty obvious. We already know the employee ID will be a best candidate. But if it's not the case, you have to test it, right? You test the same rule that we test earlier about the functional dependencies, okay? So again, if you look at the ID for one, two, three, four, five, if you look at, so there's only one per row, so that's okay, that's neat. 
if I see this ID here, will I always see the name Jane Doe? In this case, yes, right? Will I always see the same date of birth? Yes, so it does describe this employee, right? So it determines the name, determines the date of birth, will I always see the age in this case? Yeah, so in this case, if you look at the same ID here, that there's only one record for each person. So you could say this, this ID determines all of these information about that person, okay? Same thing here. When I see this ID, it only determines Jane John Smith, okay? So that is a potential for a candidate key, right? It's the determinant. Then you go to the next one. Well, but what about the name? If I see Jane Doe, well, I always see one, two, three, four, five. In this case, yes, because all the names are unique. What if I say, what if I happen to, you know, change a, a Forrest Gump to, um, you know, Bob Bucker? Another person can have the same name, right? We don't know that. It could be the same person. It could not be. I can have two, um, two Jeffries, right, the same name. So it's possible. So the name is duplicates here. So these, yeah, Jane Doe is fine until it get to Bob Bucker. It determines that uh, uh, Bob's ID is 78543. But down here, I see Bob Bucker again. This time I get a different ID. I get different information. So therefore we say that the name is not used, cannot be used to determine the ID, right? So this column failed. Can I use to determine the date of birth? Uh, no, because when I look at Bob Barker, they have a different date of birth. So it cannot be determined. Can you determine the age? Well, Bob and Bob, 69 and 45, no. Can I determine the department? No, different department. They're not the same. They're not the same. However, it does determine the pay code, right? So Bob, pay code, same. Bob, pay code, it seems to be the same, right? So we say that, yeah, the name, can be used to determine the pay code, but only for in this case. What if I have another person like Peter Parker, and then, you know, and Bruce Wayne is also Peter Parker, right? So if that's the case, then they no longer have the same pay code. So you can see the problem here that the name cannot be used to determine any of these columns, right? So you go to the next one, same thing, right? You look at this data birth here, does this always determine the name for Jane Doe and ID here? It's possible that this person, like Al Bundy, could have the same birthday, right? There's a lot of people who have the same birthday, exactly the same day, same year. So in this case, it's also not possible to use this to determine because I could have a different age, different HR department, different title. So this is not used as a determinant. Age, same thing, right? Age can be any. Uh, because there are more, multiple people who can have the same age and they may not be the same department. They don't have the same ID, okay? HR, right? If you look at the department, HR can have multiple people in the same department, like IT, for example. If I see IT, do I always see 18? No. Do I always see 7, 7, 2001? And this table, yeah, because you need, but you're thinking about a million records, right? It's possible that you don't see the same date of birth. As I don't see here, right? It's different. So again, it has to be exactly the same in order to determine that column. Can I see it, Peter Pan? And this is also Peter Pan? No, it's not, so it fails, right? So again, the department is not possible, cannot be used to determine all the other columns because they are different, okay? Title, same thing, manager. If I see manager, do I always see HR? Down here is, there is not, so already failed, okay? Do I always see the age 32? Two year, 55? No, failed. Do I always see the same birthday, 123? Here is 123, here is not, so fail. Do I always see Jane Doe? No, I don't, it's El Bundy, right? Do I always see the employee ID? So again, the title cannot be used to determine any of these columns. What about the right side? Manager is SA. Manager, SA, hmm, appears to be, right? Appears to be SA. SA means like a salary. HR is hourly rate, okay? So it appears to be that way. So based on this data alone, we can say that um, it's possible. But then if you move it down here, 
electrician essay. I don't have a, a lot of uh, information here, but um, it's possible that a, an associate is HR. I can have another employee is also an associate who also who has a um, salary as well. Okay, so it's also not possible to do this way. Then again, the pay code cannot determine all the other columns because they're all different. The same thing over here. Okay, <clears throat> so in this case, only the employee ID is used can be used to determine all the other columns. If I do um, one, two, three, four, five in Jane Doe, if combine this together, will I always see the same information? In this case, yes, right? So if I combine both of those, I can use those as primary key and determine all the other uh, columns. That's fine too. So th that is also a potential for a you know, uh, composite key, right? But since this already, you know, a single column can already be determined, used to determine all the other columns, we don't need additional columns to use as a primary key. Okay. So um, in, in that example, then what we're going to do is we're going to, um, so we're going to say that this column, I'm going to duplicate this, okay? I'm going to duplicate this. And we're going to say this column is going to be the primary key. So I'm going to add this as a primary key, put your PK. And I'll mark it different color so we can tell that it's going to be a, oops, we use that as the primary key. And this column is now the primary key. And I'll change it back to a uh, back to forward column. Okay. <clears throat> so now it has a primary key. And <clears throat> we don't have any redundancy data in here, right? So this is what's it called a first normal form, okay? One and F. It says, first normal form says, employee is the backend with the primary key. All the data are only unique, right? About one, uh, one type it has only the ID, has the name only, the data book, the age, like the primary is HR. If I have like HR and you put comma, you know, um, IT or something, then that's not right, right? Because I have two different types of data. Or if I have like an age, uh, some kind of a special code, what is that, right? If that's the case, then this rule does not apply. Since I don't have it, everything here, every cell is, I have a single type of data. So that rule is whole. And so now we have finished what's called the first normal form. Very simple in this example here. Okay, I'll put red. So now let's think about the next one. <clears throat> what about the second normal form? Second normal form says that we have to um, look at repeating, are there any repeating data in here? Okay, are there any? Um, Information here that is not dependent on the primary key. That means that they have to be dependent, have to be about that employee, right? Remember, a table has to be only about the employee. If you look at this one here, we see that the employee is from here to here. This is these are about the employee. Okay. The department here um, has some information is repeating. Uh, not repeat, but uh, it, it's possible that uh, you have some problem here. What if, again, back to the rule, if I ask to give some new data to an employee and they enter some record in here and enter some information and instead of, instead of news, they call it news uh, department, right? So you can see there's an error already here that I have news and news department as a typo, right? That is a potential error that can also have to be avoided. Uh, not only that, if you look at, um, uh, so if you if you change right if you change the IT department, suddenly I say, oh, you know what, we uh, don't we don't call it um, you know IT anymore. We call it uh, something you know something IT right IT IT dash web or something. Then if you have 100,000 records, you have to manually go inside each of these departments, each of these records and find all the ITs and replace them. Yeah, you can do that using the uh, you know uh, update 
which is fine. But you can see all these repeating data can be used in here, right? A lot of the, uh, repeating data can be avoided. IT is not a big deal. What if customer service, right? It's a really big name. If I have a hundred of these, imagine number of characters that you put in two of those, okay? So those could also be changed. What if I change the pay code? Instead of, you know, SA, I change it to SAL, like salary. So I have to go through all these here and change to those salary as well. <clears throat> okay, so you can see some errors in here. Um, so what we're gonna do is we want to break this out because this information is not only about that employee anymore, right? So the manager is the title for this employee, but it's not about that. It's not about Jane Doe. If you look at manager, manager could be uh, somebody else, right? Could be somebody else. The uh, pay code. If you look at that, that has nothing to do with Jane Doe. It's just a pay code. The pay code is really dependent on the title, right? Maybe the title of the, uh, the manager or whether the person is working full-time or part-time. There's other missing information here as well, right? And, and, and that's, right, so that's something you can look into. Uh, look at the description here, okay? Um, just some text about each individual person, so that's fine. So if you look at this, you can say that this entire four columns over here, okay, they don't really describe that employee. Because again, if you look at the employee, it's, a, it's like as a person, okay, what does it have? A person has a name, a date of birth, an age, right, an ID to, to make it unique. But HR, they can change, right? Something that can change, then usually they, they don't belong there. <clears throat> I can upgrade to a manager. I can be downgraded to an associate, right? That is not always stick with Jane Doe. The pay code could also change and the description could change. So therefore, this is something else completely outside of the employee itself. So therefore, we have to think about that and we have to move them out to a different table, okay? <clears throat> So again, the rule is that if I do change HR IT, I have some problem. So what do we do? We're going to change this to um, a, a different form. Okay, so I'm gonna duplicate this now. And I will, let's change this because it's one in here. Okay, so we're gonna duplicate this. So this is gonna be in the two and F, uh, I should point out. So this time, what are we going to do? I'm gonna remove this. So let's do the de department first. The department can be moved out into a new table and we'll do it over here, I guess. Um, so I'm gonna copy, <clears throat> I'll copy uh, this. Actually, yeah, uh, let's copy this column. This column, go over here. <clears throat> Actually put it over here, okay. And it will have a department ID, this would be the primary key. And we'll put here some numbers, like one, two, three, four, five. How many departments do we have? HR, facility, IT, customer, and admin. So we move that to admin, and then we have news. And we have marketing, right? So these are the five unique, or six, seven unique uh, tables, positions. So six, seven, okay? So we have a table that is now, uh, can be used to classify these department. So that if I change IT, I change it only one place. I don't go in here and change IT, IT, and in many places. So once I do that, then this department becomes the EEPT ID as a foreign key, okay? And then the HR and maps to ID of one, right? So this would be one, Facility is two, IT is uh, three, customer service is four, IT again, that's a three, uh, admin is a five, news is a six, then six, admin is five, and then marketing is seven. Okay, so now you see that once I do that, <clears throat> I can access the actual name of the department via this foreign key, because the one always maps to HR, right? 
So if I have to re rename HR to like something else, like human, human resources, the full name, then you can see I only change one place. I don't have to go here and do that, you know, a hundred times. All right, you see the potential or the power of that, right? Put it back. That's how we do that. So the same thing for the title, because I could change the title manager and then I have to replace everywhere else. So the same idea, I'm gonna copy this table. Let me uh, remove this two table here. Let me delete, uh, clear, or clear this, delete. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna copy this. I have only one, two, uh, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Right, so I have eight of them. So copy this, we're done here. And we'll call this the a department table. Okay. And this is the um, title table. So it'll be the title as the PK ID. And then this is the title. And we have um, manager. I'm going to copy this right in here. And I'm gonna do a okay, so six, seven, um, manager, electrician, associate manager. This is the director. This is CEO. We have a order. And then we have the photographer. And then before that, we after that we have the VP for vice president. You have the manager is repeating. Okay, so we have about six as well, eight, right? Six, seven, eight. Okay, <clears throat> so those are the the cells, and we move shift up. Okay, so again, so we go back here and you see the title ID as the FK. So the manager is one. Electrician is two, associate is three, director, uh, the manager is one again, director is a four, CEO is five, a reporter is six, and then photographer is seven, and VP is eight, and manager again is one. So the same, uh, similar to that of the department ID, right? So you can see that I would break that out into a different table. This is now, this is the, the primary key. This is the primary key. Oops. And then these two are now the foreign keys. I'm going to copy and change the font to, I say we keep those yellow. Okay, so those are your foreign keys. And do the same thing for the pay code, right? Only three of them. So I'm going to make one. There's, I think there's three. So we copy, copy this. I'll just get one, two, and three. Put it right here. Put it right below here. This is the pay code. So the pay ID. And this is the uh, code. So we have the SA and the HR. And you don't have another one, but we could create one for like undefined, just in case we have one, right? They might be on a um, now I'll leave uh, on a contract basis, for example, those be undefined, right? So then we have the essay would be just one, one, two, one, 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 two, and one, one. Okay, so again, this would be the uh, pay ID as FK. We color that. And then now, so now it looks good, right? So these are only foreign keys that are linked to external tables. So this is called a parent table. No, actually, uh, these are the, the, the child table because these are now parent table. When you, when the primary key of a table is referenced in another table, this table is called the parent. This is now the child table, okay? Because this table depends on the department, the title, and the pay key, pay code, right? So it's the child table. So we have that going on. And this is supposed to be the 2NF. 
Okay, so that's good. We can leave it as is. If 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 that's okay, that's fine. And or we can also, you know, move this out to another table if you want to. It's just a description, or sometimes you can just call it a comment. Will it always be the same? Oh, may not, may or may may not be, because you know, a director of IT, IT director. I can, you know, if I have another IT director, I can call it differently. It doesn't matter. So it's like a comment only. You can leave it here. That's fine. Um, or you can move it out if you want to. Okay, that's entirely up to up to you. If you move it out, then you can do the follow the same the same rule. So we can leave it out, or we can do we can move it out. If I do move it out, then it'll be something like the following. But remember that this comment um, has to be about the employee, right? So we have to reference the employee ID because this comment only is only about Jane Doe. This is about John Smith and so forth. So if you do that way, you have to know where this comment is, is coming from or going to. Okay, so the, if that's the case, then I can create one and um, over here. So we'll create, um, maybe I'll copy, uh, I'm going to copy three of them. I need three of this. That put over here. Let's say you put over here on the right side. And the first one will be the description IDs over here. Uh, description. Oops. ID. That's the, that's the uh, primary key. Okay, let me make it a little bit bigger. So this would be the primary key. I'll change the color to that. This is the employee ID. This is the foreign key. So employee ID. And then this is the common, right? Okay, so this would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Uh, no, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. This is a unique ID, right? But these are the employee IDs. Okay, so that means that I have to go over here and copy their IDs. Let me go and copy this, it's easier, and put it over here. So now we see that each employee is added to a different table and I can make it so that all of these are, let's change the font to be, um, that's a foreign key data. And then over here we have what's called the description. So, so if I do that, I'm not linking here. So this is the child table now, right? So the child table, as you can see, the child table uh, has the foreign key. But the parent table don't have the foreign key. So in this case, I don't need this column anymore, okay? So I'm gonna delete this column. And now you see that these are all foreign data. So I'll make those pink. And then these are the parent table of the description. I take that whole thing wrong. Uh, yeah, so this is the description. Description table. So and I'm going to have four tables, right? Five tables. So based on that ID, uh, this ID here, I can know the description. So when you join, join the employee table and the description table based on the employee ID that I can get the description, right? Join the employee table and the department table I can get based on the department ID. ID, I can get the name of the department. Join employee and title, I can get the title based on the title ID. Okay, so now you see that this is now has a primary key, determines the department, uh, primary key determines the title, and now this primary key here, right, determines each individual employee, uh, a unique employees. So now what I have here is actually a two and F. So it, it satisfied that rule, okay? Because each table is now unique. All the data are only about that employee, that person. Right, the, the ID here is all about the department. All these are about the titles, right? They don't have anything else. These are all the pay code, about the pay table. 
and these are descriptions about that description. Again, this data here is a foreign key. So you have to reference that. So that's fine, leave it in here. But this foreign key is also related to this description table, right? Okay. So you can see how now these tables are now very normalized to the third, second normal form. So this is already third normal form, okay? So these three here, these three here, let me highlight this are already. I'll copy this, I'll highlight it, and I'll make it really big and blue or something that I'll shade this. Actually, I won't shade it. Okay, so this is already a third normal form. Because it already satisfies all the rules. All the data are unique. They are about that table only, and there are no duplicates. Okay, so this table is already satisfied. So we can leave that as is. So now we look at this table here again. This is the raw table data, right? Now, what do we think about here? Okay, we look at this name here. Right, you see James Doe John Smith. This is not efficient. So what we do is we're going to break this into multiple columns. Not only that, you look at this age here. Remember, this is a calculated number, right? The age here is uh, determined based on the current time. It should be about the current time, right? Unless the age is based on the hiring date, then that'll be different. Right? When I was hired, I was 32. Then that's that's different. But again, when you hire, when you were hired, you don't put the hiring age, we put the hiring date. So based on the hiring date, you can also still calculate when, uh, how old you were when you got hired based on your date of birth and the hiring date, if you have a date column. So therefore this age column is not needed. Okay, so this is calculated column. This has to be removed. This also has to be uh, cleaned up and add additional columns like first name, middle name, and last name if that's more efficient. Okay, so that is something we're gonna do. So I'm gonna duplicate this and we're gonna name this. It's gonna be the third normal form. So our final state will be by changing this column, it's gonna split this column to two. And let's see if I can, uh, how do I do this? Insert to the right is okay. Okay, so we're gonna add another column over here. We will name it to a last. We'll keep this first. And if, we, if you decide to have a middle name, you can add another column there too, okay? But I'm gonna just use, use two. So here, put Jane and then Bill over here. So John Smith. Uh, Peter Pan, right? And then Al Bundy, or Pat, Bob Parker, Lois, Lane, Peter Parker, Bruce, and then we have Forrest Gump. Okay, much better, right? And then we don't need this column, so we're going to delete that. And boom. So now we have what's called a third normal form. So now all on third normal form. So in this case, we'd say this is a normalized database. Okay. So everything is about that employee, right? It's all, every row is unique based on this column here. There's no duplicates. All the fields are, you know, atomic. Okay. They have the same data type in here. And all these are reference keys. We need those because we need to have some kind of relationship between the two, a okay, direct relationship. <clears throat> Otherwise, how do we know which department they belong to? So these are just foreign keys, so they are fine. Uh, and then these tables are already in their normal form. Okay, so you see that now from this unnormalized table, okay, this is useful, however, it is useful when you want to generate report, right? you can still generate this same data from these five tables, okay? Because now this is normalized. So to normalize the data, you will, you will never have the problem. 
when I insert a new employee in here, right? I have this information. So I look at the employee here, I answer a new employee. Um, let's say I answer uh, employee like one, nine, nine, three, four, five. And this is like a J, um, J Leno. Okay, his birthday is, let's say, 12, 23, uh, 19, 56 or something. Okay, which department he belongs to? Let's say he is um, a the director, so he'll be uh, the H, it's in the news, so he'll be in unit department number six. Okay, and then he's entitled, he's a C, he's a director, so four, and his paid is salary, so we put one. Right? So that's all I need to do here. So I don't have to go and change here. And I can put a comment here if I want to about Jay Leno is number 199345. And his comment is um, uh, talk show host, right? So we have added a new record to the table. And so we don't have to touch these tables at all. It'll always be correct. I suppose too, if we were to do that over here, I have to go here and put like, uh, what's it again? Copy this. So if I copy this over here, I put it over here like this, right? J Leno. And then uh, 12, 23, 19, 26. Okay, at the, the age, I don't know, let's just say, um, you know, uh, what? Seven, I don't know, 70, 60, from other age, let's something like that. And he's a um, director, oh, he's, a, he's a got news, and he's a director, something like that, like essay, and then, you know, talk show, or something like that, right? So I could potentially, you know, mistype uh, moose depth, and then I put here like um, director, I could just do that, right? You see some problem here because I have to manually enter this information to these columns. And because of that, I have some accurate data as opposed to if I do it this way, right? I just put the correct code number and the name will always be correct. If I have to change the title, I have to go into the title table and change those. If I change it, everywhere else is also changed. Right? Same thing for the department and same thing for the pay code. Okay, so you can see how efficient this is when you do data entry. You avoid any of the problem that you may have. Okay, if I happen to delete like Jay's record, if I delete Jay's record here, I can just delete from here. But I can't do that because if I do that, this table depends on Jay Leno's record. So if I try to delete it, it's going to crash because if I happen to delete that, then it doesn't have this ID anymore. So this ID here is attached to that ID over there, and therefore it's not allowed when you try to delete, okay? This is tied to Jay Leno's ID. So in order to delete, delete this, you have to delete this first. The order if you do that first. Once that's been deleted, then I can go ahead and delete from here, okay? So that's the order of deletion. And so the data, you have to insert in the other order, insert employee first, then go to the comment description. If you want to delete something here, you cannot, you cannot just like, okay, I want to delete marketing. You can't do that because marketing has been used in here. Okay. So if you do that, you have to go into the child tables, remove all the data first before you can remove from the parent table. That is the rule. It also, this is also why it's so important so that your data are uh, contained together by using what's called this term up here. Up here, I mentioned the very top. Um, this word called referential integrity constraint, okay? Because they're referenced in another table I cannot accidentally delete the department here without going to all the other tables that depend on it and delete all this information. 
if I have to delete this record seven, I have to delete Peter Parker uh, information out so I can, uh, no, I mean, delete Forrest Gump so I can delete it. It's only one that use it. If I delete news, I have to delete both uh, Lois Lane and Peter Parker out of that. All the information has to be deleted in order to delete that. So in a way, you're protecting your data just in case you accidentally delete them, okay? So you have that referential integrity constraint. So, so same rule applies to all these information here.